Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. In today's one, we are going to be talking about booking, in particular booking functions to use with your Vapi assistants. Now, booking being one of the most complex things to achieve with these voice assistants requires a much more nuanced and probably more complex solution than a simple make scenario. And that's what we'll be looking at today, combining make with your own custom code base to provide a much more foolproof booking system to utilize with your vapey assistants. This will be a complex one, so we'll jump right in, but first we'll explore sort of the differences between human booking over the phone versus machine booking over the phone. Let's jump in. Before we jump into the setup, let's quickly have an overview of what it looks like for a human to be booking in a customer or a client into the calendar as compared to an AI. Now this is a very straightforward process for a human. A user will express intent that they wanna book in, the staff member will have a look on their computer. What available time slots do we have in our calendar? Okay, I see a few. Suggest them to the user all over the phone. The user will say, yes, okay, that works. The staff member will then process that booking or calendar event on their computer, collecting a user's name, email, time zone, preferences, anything like that. Once that's done, that's all good. Appointment is booked. Now, when we look through the lens of a machine or AI, it becomes quite troublesome booking in a calendar. A simple exercise becomes very challenging. Now, why? Well, it's simple because there are a lot of steps associated with actually booking in a calendar that a human doesn't necessarily understand while they're doing it because of this thing called vision. We can visually do a task on a computer, whereas an AI cannot. Now, yes, vision AI does exist, but that doesn't apply to vapey assistance. So thinking about it programmatically, the first thing we need to establish when undergoing calendar booking is recognizing the user's intent when they say something like, I'd like to book an appointment. And then from there, we have to trigger or invoke a function to facilitate booking an appointment. But to book an appointment, we need to have an agreed time. So we need to first suggest available times to the user. And to do that, we have to query a calendar API to get those open slots. And there's a lot of steps associated with this, which we'll go into. And then from there, when we agree on a time, the user may say something like next Wednesday at 2 p.m. We need to pass this conversational input back into appropriate times that these API frameworks can actually understand and interpret. And then you run into an issue if the preferred time is unavailable where we have to repeat this process again. But if the user and AI come to an understanding and we book in a time, we need to then collect some parameters like the user's name, email, and time zone, similar to what a human would do here. To actually process this booking, we need to do it programmatically. So using a calendar API with these details to actually create a booking. Now, a very high level overview and a bunch of steps here probably looks ugly, but it's good to understand what's going on here and why doing calendar booking over the phone is quite complex. And today I'm going to give you all the templates I'm using in this video to facilitate a more seamless foolproof method of booking over the phone using your vapey assistants. So we'll jump into a quick demo of this system working. Basically, we are giving the user our available time slots before we book in. If they can't do any of the three suggested time slots, it repeats the process with different time slots until we agree on one and then we book it in. So we'll jump over to our test here and this is just the function side of things where we can embed this into any assistant. So we'll talk with the assistant. Hey, I would like to make a booking. One moment. We have available time slots on Monday at 10.30 a.m. and Friday at 4.30 p.m. Let's go next Friday at 4.30 p.m. Great. Could you please provide your name and email address for the booking? The name is Jonas and the email is jonas at gmail.com. Hold on a sec. Your booking for next Friday at 4.30 p.m. has been successfully made, Jonas. 
You'll receive a confirmation email shortly. Thank you. So as you can see, booked in here, no worries. Now if I were to call back in and dispute those suggested time slots, it will return some new time slots that we can book in. Hey, I would like to make a booking, please. Just a sec. We have two available time slots, Friday at 11.30 a.m. and Friday at 2.30 p.m. Which one would you prefer? Uh, do you have anything next week? Here are some additional available time slots for next week. Monday at 10 a.m. Wednesday at 3 p.m. Please let me know which time works best for you. Next Wednesday at 3 p.m. Great. To confirm your booking for next Wednesday at 3 p.m., may I have your name and email address, please? Name Jeff. Email jeff at gmail.com. Hold on a sec. Your booking for next Wednesday at 3 p.m. has been successfully scheduled, Jeff. If you have any further questions or need to make changes, feel free to let me know. Thank you. Okay, so we'll need three things to accomplish this. The first being cal.com, so create your account. The second will need make, and the third will need VS code and ngrok. What we'll do is head over to the link in the description under my repository. You'll create a fork and you'll copy your unique HTTP address and we'll head over to VS code to which we'll clone this repo. Over in VS code, head over to the left here and we can clone a repository with that address. Clone from Git and make a new folder can be wherever desktop and it'll clone the repository into your own folder open that now that you have the repository open in your vs code library you'll head over to your terminal and all we have to do is install the dependencies so we can do npm install from here we need to create our environment file, which houses your Calcom API key. Head over to the left here and we'll create a new file. Call it .env, so period env. We need to create our environment file. And here, like I said, is going to be our Calcom key. And you want to call it Calcom underscore API underscore key equals. And this is where your API key will be. To find your Calcom API key, you'll need a Calcom account. When you have that created, you'll head to settings developer API keys and create your own API key here. We'll copy that and this is where it'll sit. And now we've loaded up our environment variable. This means it's gonna to connect to your Calcom. All we have to do now is head over to availability.js. This is where we're submitting the get request to apical.com slots available. What we need to make note of is the event type ID, event type slot. To actually get these from your Calcom API, head over to the developer docs. So cal com docs and make sure you're in um, just api v1 reference for now there's a few references here but we'll hit into api v1 reference and under event types find all event types now we'll authorize in by copying and pasting our cal live api key and hit send up here and what this is returning is all the event types you have created in your cal.com. So yours may look very different. There's four I have here. So different event types, similar to like a Calendly event uh, or a meeting event. And I'm gonna use this one, the voice agent discovery. Just locate whatever one you want to be using. For instance, I'm looking for AI voice agent discovery. So we'll have the ID here and the slug here. Need these two things. So when you have the ID, Take that, paste it in here. So we'll grab the ID and I've already got him in here. Event type ID and the slug here, just copy and paste that. Perfect. So this is all you need to do in terms of VS Code. All you have to do now is in a terminal, sudo node um, app.js to run it. 
and you'll see all the available time slots in your calendar have populated in here. This doesn't matter too much. This just lets you know it's working. You'll see 23 morning slots, midday slots, etc., etc., etc. Create a new terminal. And now we're gonna be use, using something called ngrok, which will expose this logic to a HTTP request, which we can use in make to call to. Now, namely, we want to call to this to retrieve the available time slots and perform the function that returns those three. To do so, I suggest going to ngrok, and once you have an account, you'll hit domains, you'll hit add new domain, and you can call it whatever you want. After that has been created, you'll see your domain here. And now all we have to do is make sure that this endpoint is live. So to do that, head back to VS Code, ngrok HTTP 80 dash dash domain. And we're gonna be using this domain, liveagent.ngrok.app. Hit enter and your session will configure and this is where the traffic's being forwarded to. So now we have a live address that houses this logic. Cool, that's it. Now, one thing to consider is time zone. If you're in a different time zone, locate all the time zone references here that I have for Australia, Sydney, and change them to your specific time zone in the availability.js as well as app.js. Just one thing to note. Okay, that's all configured. Nothing else we have to do here. This just sits in the background. Uh, so no issues there. Now we'll jump over to make.com and hit import blueprint with the blueprint provided below. It'll save you a lot of time. Hit open and wow, look at all that. May look complex, but it's not. All we have to do is configure some things. So first and foremost, these HTTP modules, uh, particularly these three, so middle and bottom, you need to be careful of the URL here. Now this URL will be specific to you. So whatever uh, domain you have in ngrok, change this middle domain. Make sure you have forward slash reset slots here and forward slash get available slots here, but changing your domain as well as down the bottom here. So as long as you change those three, you'll be good to go. Up here, we're using cal.com bookings. So you wanna head into the URL here and under bearer value here, you'll need to change this to your bearer token. And to find that we can go back into VS Code, the environment file here, copy that and we'll paste that in here. Everything else is good. You'll note some mappings down here. So to actually set these up correctly, we'll need to run this webhook first. Hit okay and choose your webhook, create a webhook, name it whatever you want test. Now we have our webhook that Vapey can communicate with to invoke those functions. So hit OK. We'll copy the address to clipboard. And one final thing to set up is the Vapey tools and create a new assistant with the system prompt I provided in the description below. Essentially, this is just an embeddable part uh, where you can put into whatever assistant. Uh, but the three main things here are to invoke the first tool which will return the available time slots, the second tool to return more available time slots, and then tool name B1, which is booking. So we'll need three tools uh, to actually create the booking. So I'll quickly run through creating those tools now. The first tool is gonna to be named availability E. You can name this whatever, but for simplicity's sake, there's filters here. So you might wanna name it just, just the same, but do take note of that if you're name and whatever. The first tool is going to be tool name availability E, tool used to retrieve calendar available time slots and present them to the user. Now we have one property here, which is request, user request. We don't wanna get anything from the user to give them available time slots at first. That's why we're uh, doing that here. The second one is availability two E. Again, you can name that whatever you want, but just for clarity's sake, uh, I have filters set up here for those specific names using the tool call function name. This is the exact same as the first availability thing, so I wouldn't worry about that. And then finally, the booking tool, most important booking E, tool used for creating the booking calendar and the properties, a date, name date, the user's date for, uh, user's selected date for the booking, name, the user's name of the booking and email the user's email or booking. Make sure these are all required parameters or properties um, before you go. One thing to note is 
when creating the tools. Make sure your webhook URL is the same for all of them because we wanna be processing all the functions in the same scenario. So I'll just add the new one, just for example, change these out. And then make note of all these names and in your assistance, we'll do the first available name. So it's gonna be availability underscore E and then availability under availability two underscore E. I know they're weird names and then booking underscore E and make sure in advanced or functions, make sure they're all selected here. So one, two and three. Cool, hit publish and you're good to go. What we can do now is make sure that our server is running whenever you wanna start this. Just type sudo node app JS, make sure that's running. And all we have to do now is turn this scenario on. All we'll do now is talk with the assistant, but let's just make sure that we're using, let's just use GPT-4 or real-time cluster. It'll process this correctly, uh, just in testing. So talk with assistant. I'd like to make a booking, please. Great, I can help with that. Let me check the available time slots for you. Give me a moment. Here are the available time slots. Friday at 9 a.m., Friday at 12 p.m., Monday at 5 p.m. Which one would work best for you? Friday at 12 p.m., please. Could you please provide your full name and email address? The name is Jonas and the email address is jonas at gmail.com. Hold on a sec. Your booking is confirmed, Jonas. We have you scheduled for Friday at 12 p.m. If you need further assistance, feel free to let me know. Thank you. Now, if I go back to the bookings, you'll see where are we? Friday at 12 p.m. just got created. Now with cal.com, you can sync any calendar with this, um, set your availabilities. Um, again, you can connect apps, Google Calendar. This will sync with your Google Calendar. So if I went over to my Google Calendar, you'll see here Friday at 12 p.m. got booked here. There you go. That's how you set that up fully from start to finish. Now on the Vapey side of things, when you have created those tools, you can invoke them wherever you want in a script. This is generally the, the, the sequential steps on how to make this booking function work. So do sort of follow this. All the resources will be provided below, but that is it for today. A big one for you guys with plenty of free resources. Uh, I thought I would treat you guys to my 30th video. Everything's down below, including the steps on how to do everything I just explained, but a huge booking system here that's very, very reliable. Again, if you're looking to stay ahead of the AI curve, be sure to drop a follow. If you found this video useful or interesting or have any questions, drop me a comment also. I try to reply to everyone. But that's it for today until next week.